Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. One of my most important teachings in the past and today is forgiveness. It's the antidote to much of what ails individuals and society. So much of the suffering that human beings endure is of their own making and comes from clinging to the past, or more accurately, clinging to one's ideas and beliefs about the past, and particularly the feelings that spring from these ideas and beliefs. No one has ever actually succeeded in clinging to the past. The past is a mental construct. It doesn't have any reality. All the past is is a memory of something that happened. And a memory isn't real. It has no substance and can't even be relied on to be consistent or true. What good are memories, then? That's a good question. Neither good nor bad memories serve in the present moment, which is to say memories do not serve life. The present moment will always be better without your memories. Life will always be better without them. Joy is inherent in every moment, but that subtle joy can easily be obscured by other feelings, ones produced by thoughts about the past and the future. Most negative feelings come from stories told about the past, and most fear comes from concerns about what might happen in some imagined future. You may think you need your thoughts about the past and future, but you don't. One of the reasons you feel this way is that thinking is instilled with a sense of importance it doesn't warrant. I'm not talking about using the mind to solve problems, for that is what the mind was designed for, but using the mind to think about oneself in the past and future. If you look carefully, you'll see that you even think about yourself in the present, which has nothing to do with the present moment, but only taints your experience of it. You don't need to think yourself into existence this way. The false self is born from thoughts about yourself in the past, present, and future. That's all the false self is, and you don't need a false self. You can disregard the thoughts that arise concerning the past, the future, and even the present, and you'll function very well without them. You don't need to think about yourself. This is quite different from saying that you don't need to think, because you do need to use your intellect to read, evaluate, examine, design, plan, and create. But when you use your intellect this way, you're not thinking about yourself and your life in the past and future. You're not at the center of those thoughts. You're just thinking for practical purposes. Who or what is it that thinks about this imaginary you in the past and future? That which does this has a perspective that includes things other than the imaginary you. But the imaginary you itself cannot and does not think. The real you is what uses the intellect to think about the imaginary you, the false self, or about other things. The real you is the only thing here with intelligence and the ability to use that intelligence. What thinks, the true self or consciousness, can think itself into a place of suffering by dwelling on thoughts and disregarding other aspects of reality. Or it can be free of suffering by not getting lost in thoughts, but instead taking in the larger reality that is life. The true self can get lost in thoughts about the false self, or it can just be and experience life just as it is. Words fail us here a bit, because even when identification with the false self is happening, the true self is never fully lost in identification. This is how the duality within consciousness is created. The true self becomes the false self, 
while remaining unchanged by that experience and ever present and ever available even within that experience. That's interesting, isn't it? Your consciousness zooms in and becomes the false self or zooms out and becomes the true self depending on what it's focusing on. Consciousness gets more or less lost in the illusion of a false self. What consciousness is focused on determines your state of consciousness, whether your state is contracted or expanded. And importantly, what consciousness is focused on also determines your happiness. If you're focused on thoughts about the past, you're stuck in the false self for however long you're focused on those thoughts, and you're bound to be unhappy. The point is, the false self is an imagination, a mere symbol of you, a cardboard character. The false self has no will and no thoughts of its own. It has no intelligence. It just seems to, because what does have will and the capacity to think, your true self, joins or identifies with the false self. Your true self becomes the false self, like putting on a costume. Your true self plays a role and forgets who it really is. But as I said, while the true self is identified with the false self, the true self remains untouched by that identification. What this has to do with forgiveness is this. There's nothing to forgive, since there is no past. It's gone. It's a mirage. The past has no existence and therefore no power except the existence or power you give it when you bring it into the present moment through thought. To free yourself from this tendency to give the past power by remembering it, it's often necessary to forgive the past or you're likely to dwell on your memories and suffer. Forgiveness of yourself and others in the past allows you to forget the past, to leave those memories behind, and to live in the present moment. Forgiveness allows you to leave the false self behind and just be present as your true self. It frees you from identification with the stories that create the false self and hold it in place. It frees you from the illusion so that you can experience yourself more truly. Bringing the past into the present doesn't serve. This may seem to be a survival strategy, since you do learn from the past, but whatever was learned from the past is already learned and doesn't need to be remembered or repeated in one's mind. Remembering an event isn't necessary for learning. The body-mind is constantly recording what it's learning, and that learning is available to the body-mind in any moment. The aspect of mind that brings the past into the future is not the rational part of the mind, but the primitive part. And these memories do not have a purpose, not for survival or otherwise. In fact, Going over traumatic or difficult events in your mind reactivates any wounds and tends to hold any wounding from the past in place. Remembering keeps the pain going and often delays the lesson that's meant to be learned from that experience. Although you aren't in control of a memory arising, you can choose to not dwell on those thoughts. Like unwanted visitors who pretend to have a reason for visiting, thoughts about the past keep you from being more fully and more purely in your life. Thoughts about the past take the joy out of life. Even happy memories take the joy out of the present moment. They make you feel sad that that time is no longer here, leaving you with a sense that something is missing or not good enough about the way things are right now. Thoughts about the past clutter the present moment, 
detracting from its beauty and fleeting perfection. You miss life as it's showing itself here and now because that experience is encumbered by unnecessary thoughts and the feelings created by those thoughts. Forgiveness allows you to set those thoughts aside and just be present with the way life is showing up without a judgment about whether that is good or bad. Memories, on the other hand, are never that simple. They're tainted with a sense of having been good or bad because that's how the egoic mind sees things, in terms of good or bad. When you're present without your thoughts, however, life just is, and how it is, is always fine, always enough, always full and complete in its own unique and perfect way. Thoughts, both about the past and the future, taint the present moment with a judgment of good or bad, with the mind's evaluation of life. A happy memory results in the feeling, I liked that moment more than this one, while a painful memory, instead of evoking gratitude that that experience is no longer here, just brings the pain of the past into the present moment, spoiling it. How strange it is that human beings do this to themselves. But this isn't conscious. I'm pointing this out now to make this more conscious so that you see that you don't have to ruin the present moment with sad memories, regrets, resentment, rage, or guilt. Nor do you have to escape the present moment through happy memories. Be happy now. You can simply choose to experience this moment now without any evaluations of good or bad. Experience it just as it is. It is what it is, and whatever it is, is enough. It's neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. Don't make this moment good or bad. Just let it be, without any thoughts about it. Lose yourself, your false self, in it. Let all your thoughts go and just experience life, free of all thoughts, evaluations, and judgments. You'll find that you'll also be free of all unpleasant emotions. Your evaluations of life create unpleasant emotions, and then you experience life as unpleasant. But life without your thoughts about it is far from unpleasant. Life just as it is, is a joy, an amazement, a wonder, a great gift. This is how you're meant to feel. These are the feelings of your natural state. These are your true feelings. They are a gift. You are this joy, wonder, and love of life. You are life, just living itself as you. Forgiveness is important simply because it helps you embrace life now without the baggage of the past. Leave the past to God. It is not for you to regret the past or hold grudges or feel whatever you might feel as a result of the past. Give those regrets, grudges, resentments, anger, and even your self-righteousness towards those who've wronged you to God, so that you can be free of their burden and be in life in love and peace. Let the past go. Give it to God and be in peace now. Many of you have carried the burden of the past long enough you can drop it now and be free and at peace. We wish you all love and peace. Thank you for being here. We are with you always.